Welcome back, this is Deborah, and today I'm going to continue on and I'm going to finish my little uh, booklet pocket thing that I made started yesterday with my envelopes because I just ran out of time to finish it so I've gathered a few more things as well so I can actually finish it off. So I'll start by finishing this. I've got three more surfaces that I want to put some things on and I've pulled out some like this is just a packet of where I kind of put things when I tear maybe a book, you know, pages from books, writing pads and things. I just stick them into this plastic packet and that way when I need them, like now, I've got them. And sometimes I forget that I have them, but here it is. I also have some more of the Tim Holtz stuff out. This is not the shiny one. So I think that this is the ephemera. I think one is the layers, is the shiny stuff. I'm not sure, I'd have to go back and check, but there are two different sorts. One is coated, like the paper dolls, and one isn't, and this is the non-coated surface. But in terms of size, they're almost perfect to fit in here. Now, if you don't have things like this, you can always use pieces from book pages. You don't have to use this sort of thing. I'm just using them because I've got them and I wanted to use them. And what I wanted to do is just put some of this writing paper. So this is just out of an old book, you know, one of the A4 um, writing pad things, you know, like they use in schools. We used to have them when I was at school. And it's just one of those. I got it from an op shop. I got a bunch of them, you know, for about a dollar. So I always look out for things like this because they become quite useful. And if I use the actual main part of the paper, then I keep, like I said, all these little bits because I know one day they'll come in handy. Now this one is more, I'm trying to see where the uh, lines are. It doesn't really matter where the lines are actually and I prefer it up this way and the torn edge on this side. So that's where I'm going to put it. Let's get it stuck down because I'm also going to make the uh, tags to go into the pockets, the journaling tags or not necessarily tags but something with that. So what I'm saying is that you don't have to have the ephemera and things that I'm using. You can actually still do this sort of thing but just do it with whatever supplies you have. You can get things like this out of magazines even if it's a modern um, advertisement you could still get that out of a magazine and just you know run it through some tea make some tea or coffee and pop it in there or pop it on a tray and pour that over it and then you could make a similar thing with using that method because I know that not all of you have everything obviously we can't all have everything so there are ways around it I'm thinking of doing a couple of videos on that because it was mentioned that you know I don't have this I don't have that and that's okay you know there's lots of things that I don't have I'm lucky enough that I used to own a craft shop so I got a lot of things then because I knew that later on I might not be able to get them and then of course I also work now I teach at a craft shop so I get, um, get things from there as well for my classes and things that I'm doing. And that's okay, you don't have to have everything. So that might be a good thing to actually do is something on using alternatives. If you want alternatives to paper dolls, then look in the magazines, look in the ads and see what you've got that you can chop and cut out of those. I love these girls, they're ever so cute. I've got two sisters so maybe that's why I like them because they look like three sisters to me. And I'm just putting a paper doll there just because I like them and I've got plenty of them so I need to use them up otherwise they'll just be sitting there. At least now they're in something and then I can pop this into a journal afterwards. And I like them on the craft paper. I probably said that yesterday, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. And then for this side, I will use this piece. I'll put it on here though, on the other side. 
yeah I might do that actually I want to put some paper underneath it so I've got a bit of paper from a book and I thought I could put some of this on here just need to see how big it needs to be so probably about here like that and then I'll just tear the bottom off it as well and then this can go over the top actually I'm going to tear it down again get this white edge off because that's got really nice aging on it I'm going to keep that little bit it can go back into my plastic pocket there and that way I'll have it and I can use it on something else now I want to put this down and then the other one to see where this goes now won't I I must say I did have somebody say they found it hard to tear pre-made things like this too but this one was actually much easier because it's more like paper maybe it's the you know the ones that are glossy that I find my brain says don't tear that and use it like it is which is really really silly I understand how silly that is believe me so we've got this dude I don't know if he's a bit tall for the page I oh, know he's pretty good and I like to sit them on the edge like that when they're half on the craft and half on the other surface I think they look good like that and then there's only one more which is this page here I think I'll use the bingo I quite like the bingo but again it's coming off and I'm going to tear it, no, I'm going to tear it this way because I want that white edge. I don't want that white edge, I just want it like that. That looks good. I'm not going to put a paper doll on this side. I think that would just be all too much really. I think I've got enough paper dolls in here now. Now for my things that are going to slip in here, I've got four pieces of manila card this is just from a file folder that I cut up now if you're looking at having a rel relatively inexpensive supply then look no further than a stationery shop here in Australia I buy a hundred of these manila folders they're the A4 ones for around about $17 Australian which you know for a hundred things so that makes them 17 cents each and you know they're the whole A4 one so you get both the sides so they're super cheap so that would be my one of my suggestions for alternate product if you're not in a position to buy from you know cardstock and stuff from a craft shop and I use these all the time as you've probably noticed if you've watched my channel for a while simply because I like the feel of them I like the surface it's a nice substrate to work on and because they're cost effective so there you go that's one of my tips on being cost effective now with this I don't want them to poke out so I'm probably going to make them all smaller than what they are these are just four random bits of leftover that I've pulled out of my drawer so I have a whole drawer for file folders and it's not low at the moment but when it does get low I'll just go to the office shop the office works here in Australia it's called and I will buy myself another box of a hundred and I find they last for ages really they do so I've got four because I've got four pockets to put them in and now I need to work out what I'm going to put on them now one of the things I thought was this so this is something that I made ages ago and I do have a video on that if you go back and look you should be able to find that video if I remember I will try and put a link below but I'm not great at remembering that for some reason but if I remember I will now the pockets are going to go up that way that's the only thing I do want them in the portrait mode not this way but I thought maybe I could put some of this on one side of them because that way I'm utilizing something that I've already made and this is quite a nice one it's got a bit of ribbon in fact I could get two out of these couldn't I I'm just wondering if that's an alternate way to use a pre-made thing so 
And this was pretty easy to make. It's sewn, I've just sewn layers in a vertical line onto a piece of book page. So I think that's what I'm going to do. My glue's a bit coming out a bit, so I better use it and put it on. And then this will be the journaling spot that goes into the pocket. Now obviously I have to cut this down. It should cut okay, there's nothing there that's going to really stop it cutting. And these scissors are great, they'll cut anything really. So there you go, and that still looks great like that. And then around the edge I may just, I could tear it, let's see if I just trim it down. And then just tear this one. And I will have to trim this one because it's a little bit tiny to tear. And then a bit of ink around the edge never hurts. And then that one is ready to go in there. So a nice clear journaling spot on the back and a really nice little thing to pop in there. And then with the other one I will do the same I think and then I'll make the other two different. So that's just a matter of putting this one down. Positioning it where I want it and then trimming it off. Again just making sure that this is even on this side and on the top as well. Just going through all those layers. Oh, that is a bit crooked how I've cut that now. That's bothering me, it's rolling around on the table. Okay. So I find having pre-made things is also great just to have a bunch of those handy. I might put this one in this side as well. And now I've got a pocket in, not there, in here. So I've got two more. And this piece is actually the centerpiece, so you can see the fold lines on it, but I'm going to cover that up so it doesn't really matter if I've got that on there. Now I've got that on and I do want to put something else over the top, particularly on this side here. And seeing what else I've got in my little bits of strips that I've torn. What about this? I think I could probably do something with that, don't you think? If I tear it down again, give it a bit of a torn. This is all about tearing this thing. It wasn't meant to be like this, it's just what it's ended up as. Okay, I will put a bit of ink on here too because I can see a bit of that white and I don't want to. And I'll trim off along the bottom. I also had a comment about the fact that I show you when I make mistakes. And I do like to show you if I've made a mistake because I like to show you how I try and fix it and I think that's important you know it's not um, it's not all smooth sailing certainly on my craft table things do tend to go awry at times but I like this that's quite good isn't it with that little um, library card or whatever it is that I just tore off there and that can go in here as a journaling spot and then I've just got one more to do. I also like that they're in there and you can't really see them. But you know they're there and then because this flaps back, it's not a pocket, it's just sort of like only got two sides. It's really easy to get them out and you can put some little hidden journaling away in them so other people can't read them if you don't want them to. Yep, okay, I'm going to put the other side of the bingo card on this one. And then what? How does she look? I might need something else under her. Just, um, just, where's something? This one. Yep. I think I'm going to put like a little edge on here. Okay, so I need to just put some glue down and use that little scrap as an edge piece. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So if I stick this down on here, so it's nice and straight, and then 
I can trim it back. If I cut it back here and here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut sort of following the curve of the bingo card like that. I need to bring it in a bit there and I need to probably take it from here and I need to come up here like this a bit more just so it's got a tiny little edge on it mimicking the curve of the bingo card where I've torn that. Do I need to cut that bottom bit? I don't really want to. I don't want to cut the lines off. And then by putting that down it's a little bit better. You see? I could even put another thing on here although I don't know what that would be but I think that might be enough. Yeah, because now when I put my little paper doll on, just grab this out from here, when I put her on, because I don't want to cover all of the bingo card up with her, I can move her across and it looked a bit bare before, but now it doesn't. You can still see she's there and you've got this little bit of book coming out the side like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I like that technique too of just tucking something behind but making it follow the same pattern as the torn bit on top. I'll get this into position and then she can go here. Just going to put her shoulder just over the edge of the card like that. So I've still got maximum bingo card showing. And of course on the back I've got plenty of journaling room. So just there, so her head, her hat and her arm and shoulder are just on top like that because I think that looks nice. You get a nice look that way rather than having her out here. It's important that you make things touch each other otherwise they all look a bit weird. And a nice journaling spot on the back of that one too. So that one can go in there. And I'm just wondering what else I need to do to it now. We'll have a look and see what else we can find. Because, you know, it's, um, it's done, but it's always nice to put more things on. <laughs> Why not? More is more. I think I like something down here because I'm not really loving that, the way I've done that. That one, if I cut that one down or even like this. Hmm, I don't know. So what I'm going to do here is because I don't like that straight line, I'm going to tear some of this so that it's a skinny strip. It's already fairly skinny. And pop it down there like that to hide that line. Just like that. So you've got a bit more on top there. It's not torn as well as what I'd hoped I would have torn it, but it will do. And of course I have to make sure the writing is going the correct way. And then just rip this off down here. And taking away that straight line is really helping the piece. I think it's a much better look that way. I'm wondering if I need to do something here as well. Just thinking whether I should put something down there. I do have more of this. Again, I would have liked to have put it underneath. I wonder if I can lift that up. No, probably not now. It's a bit, all a bit late, I think. Put this down here, like that. At least that would look good. I might be able to put something on top there then. Okay, let's just do this. Rip that off. And in here, I wish I had another piece of this. And I think that I did have a piece left yesterday. I might just see if I can source that. And then I've got this piece that I've just found. And it's almost the perfect shape. So it's going to go down in the centre here to close up that gap. It's going to be a bit fiddly, but I think it'll work. 
And I want it over in that gap there. I don't mind if that there's a little gap here. And see that looks much better than what I had before with just the blankness. It looked a bit too blank for me. So if I put that down there, it's kind of working because it's just tapering off into this little skinny bit at the end. Now in keeping with this theme, I think I'm going to put something over the wallpaper. Again, just a little skinny piece that's torn. Like that. And I'll pop that over the wallpaper so it look like it's not just a little bit of wallpaper stuck on there. And I could put something else on there. Oh, this is the bit that I was looking for. Mm, I could have just put that on there, but it doesn't look any good now. So we'll just move on from that. I might put some uh, ribbon around it though. So this is just some seam binding and I'm just wondering how I'll do this, whether I'll create another sort of floppy bow because I think that might look quite good like that and then cut a bit off the end to tie that up with. I think I should still have plenty to do what I want to do when I've done this. So I've just wrapped that around my fingers three times to create three loops. Push it in here. I did this the other day as well but I thought I'd just do it again because I quite like this technique. I did it on a tag though to show you I didn't do it on something like this and then I'll need to tie that up again. And then I've got the rest of the ribbon here so I can put it around like this and tie it up. You've got this really sort of fluffy thing. If you wanted to give this as a gift or something to someone, it'd be quite nice to have a, a little thing. Now, when I stick this in the book, in the journal, I will take this back piece and I'll make sure that that's stuck on there before I stick it down. And then I've got something that I can open up. If you weren't going to stick it in a journal and you wanted to just leave it like this and put it into a pocket, then you can just slide this off and slide it back on again. It's probably a little bit loose at the moment, but I'm not worried about that because this is not the final thing in terms of where I'm going to put it. I still haven't worked that out yet, but I quite like this sort of big loopy loops on this um, seam binding. It makes it look really lush, I think, and you get a really nice look doing that. So that's it. That's my little journaling spot made with the craft envelopes and various other little bits and pieces and complete with little taggy journaling spots inside that you can use. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is Deborah. Thank you for watching. Cheers.